In this video, we'll prove a certain property of conjunction and disjunction. The property is a kind of distributive law. So let's give the proposition. It's for all x, y, and z in prop x or y and z implies x or y and x or z. Now the first thing we need to make sure of is that we can properly read this proposition. So if I were to put in parentheses everywhere underneath the universal quantifier, it would say x or y and z implies x or y and x or z. So generally we don't want to write this many parentheses, so we have certain conventions like that and binds more tightly than or, and or binds more tightly than implication. So when I gave the proposition here, I wrote the minimal number of parentheses that I needed. Now let's try and prove the proposition. We'll start as usual by assuming we have three propositions, x, y, and z. And we'll have the assumption a, x, or y, and z. And the claim we need to prove is x or y and x or z. We can start off by considering the two cases given by this assumption A. So in one case, we have x, and in the other case, we have y and z. So in the first case, let's call the assumed proof of x B, and in the second case, we'll call the assumed proof of y and z C. Actually, there would be no conflict if we called this one B as well, but let's call it C. Now, in both cases, we need to prove the same claim, x or y and x or z. So we have two sub-goals. Let's work on the first sub-goal first. We need to prove a conjunction, so that means we need to prove both conjuncts. That will split us into two more subcases. So in the first case, we need to prove x or y. In the second case, we need to prove x or z. Now it's clear that we can prove x or y by proving x, which we in fact have because of b. So this one's done. Second case is the same. We prove x using the assumption b, we're done. Now let's look at the other sub-goal, the one where we have the assumption C of Y and Z. Now a proof of a conjunction is a pair of proofs of two propositions. In this case, it's a proof D of Y and a proof E of Z. We're trying to prove a conjunction, so we need to prove two sub-goals again. In one sub-goal we have the claim X or Y. And the other sub-goal, we have the claim x or z. In the first case, we can prove the disjunction x or y by proving the right-hand side, y, which we have a proof of, d. In the second case, we can prove the disjunction x or z by proving the right-hand side, z. Again, we have a proof of this. It's e. So in the end, we had four sub-goals to prove, but they were all proven by simply looking at the assumptions we had. Now let's go back to earlier in the proof before we really got started. So recall that we started by splitting this assumed disjunction into two cases, the assumption of x and the assumption of y and z. We could have instead split this conjunction we needed to prove into two sub-goals. So now let's consider what would have happened if we had done that. So if we split this conjunction into two sub-goals at this point, we'll have one sub-goal in which we need to prove the claim x or y, and one sub-goal where we need to prove the claim x or z. Now, to prove a disjunction, we can either prove the left or prove the right. If we decide to prove the left at this point, we'll be stuck. Likewise, if we decide to prove the right, y will also be stuck. 
There's not enough information in the assumptions at this point to decide if we can prove X or we can prove Y. So we still need to do the case split on this assumption A. And it's important that we do this case split before deciding whether or not to prove the left or the right. So we'll have two subgoals of this first subgoal. In one, we have the assumption X, which I'll again call B, and we need to prove X or Y. And in the second case, we have the assumption C, Y, and Z, and we need to prove X or Y. In this first case, we can prove the left-hand side, the x, using b. In the second case, we can prove the right-hand side, the y, because this proof of a conjunction gives us y and z. So we can use the assumption d as a proof of y. Now, in the second sub-goal, in which we need to prove x or z, we don't have these assumptions uh, B or C. These were local to this first subgoal. So now we're back in a situation where we only have the X, Y, and Z propositions in the assumption A of X or Y and Z. Okay, again, we need to do a case split on the A. So you'll find that we're doing the same thing again. So we need to prove X or Z under the assumption of X. And then we need to prove X or Z under the assumption Y and Z. In the first case, we prove X using B. In the second case, we prove Z using the proof of Z that we get from C. In effect, the same thing happened. We could have done the case split on the A first, and then split the conjunction into two subgoals, in the end having four subgoals to prove, or we can split the conjunction into two subgoals and then do a case analysis on the A, again giving effectively four subgoals. So the lesson is that in some cases the order in which to do things doesn't matter. In some cases the choices really do matter. Like for example, if I had chosen to try and prove the X or the Y before doing the case split on the A, I would have gotten stuck.